uh, I think we'll get started. So I would like to invite Vibhor uh, as a co-host, who is the founder and CEO of uh, our startup that we are pitching today, Noxense. So yeah, over to you, Vibhor. Uh, hello, everyone. Thanks, Rohan. Thanks, everyone, for share, taking your time out and joining us today. Uh, okay, so I'll just share my screen and, and begin with the pitch. One second. Yeah, is the screen visible, Rohan? Uh, hi, Rohan. Uh, is my screen visible to you? Yes, it is. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, it, cool. yeah, yeah thanks. Thanks, thanks. So uh, base, before I begin with what we have built so far, I would like to share my understanding and thesis of the need for this kind of a business and where we fit in. So uh, all of us will agree that tier two, tier three India is the, uh, the, the go-to market, right? For all startups, all businesses, all new age businesses primarily. And the young and aspirational users of tier two, tier three India, the ones who have money with them, and the ones who want to experiment with newer things are the best TG for any new brand which is launching, or even which is existing and wants to tap into newer territories. So uh, before we started this company, we had this understanding that we have to somehow tap into the young and dynamic users living in tier two, tier three India, uh, engage with them, filter out the right users, as I said, the ones who have money in their banks and who are willing to spend that money, go out in the city or, you know, uh, try out new things online. So get that TG engaged with us, build a community around that TG. Now, uh, this is what we wanted to do. I'll share how we went about it and why content fits in, why uh, hyper-local businesses fit in and how we have, been man we have managed to monetize this community on the go. See, it's very easy to build a business and say that we'll monetize it once we reach that level. But since we never thought on those lines. We always thought that we have to keep on monetizing it. Keep That will give us uh, enough value and motivation to keep going. So we monetized it right from the first month of our existence. Okay, so uh, one sec. So Noxins, as I said, we are building India's largest hyper-local content-driven commerce platform. So we, two more fundamentals that what we read or what we watch is what we end up buying. This is a basic theme of the business. This is a basic theme of all marketing and advertising businesses. Number two, tier two, tier three India is the biggest consumer opportunities. Now, if you look at tier two, tier three India, you will find two media networks which exist. One is the radio network, uh, the radio cities, the radio mirchis and, and the likes. And number two is the newspaper network. But most of the young and dynamic users living in these cities are not consuming music on radio. Neither are they consuming news on newspapers, right? We have so many music streaming apps for music and online uh, news companies for national news and all, all sort of sort of news which we want to consume. But both of these two media entities serve another purpose. They act as the primary messenger for all local businesses. So if you have a sari shop or if you have a cafe, if you have a car wash center, you go to a radio station and you want to advertise there. Since the end users have moved on from radio uh, channels, that those ads are not finding any takers. But still, you will find that Radio Mirchis and Radio Cities, they are, you know, uh, posting revenues in excess of 500 crores. This is because most of the businesses still advertise on radio because they don't have another channel to advertise on. That is one uh, immediate opportunity which we sensed. And we thought, okay, let's start with this. Let's start creating content on tier two, tier three India, start building a community. And at least we'll start getting some media revenue in. So that will, you know, uh, fit into our thesis of monetizing on the go. And once we are in 10, 15 cities and we can monetize it via D2C brands and national brands and ena enable transactions on them. So that is how we began. Uh, this is what we have done in the last three years. Our revenue has grown 8X over the last three years, but it has grown by 3X every year. And this is the last uh, 12 months or so. So we have been posting numbers close to a crore, above 50 lakhs per quarter in the last one year. And the content consumption has also grown. So I just wanted to keep this slide up front because just to uh, underline the fact that we are monetizing and the, the revenue here is either via brands, which is full margin, only GST is a common which has to be paid uh, ahead of us, 
and number two is via local user subscriptions again that's a full margin business so this revenue number is is a, is a full margin business now building communities city wise as i said that's the primary aim the tg as i said people who are young dynamic outgoing who have the money and want to spend the money so we have deployed events as a hack in order to tap this community so if i do an event in let's say lucknow and 1000 people turn up so those people have the money with them because they are spending it and number two they are willing to go out so they are the right people for us and they will be they will be the ones going out to new york new york cafes and you know uh, new businesses in the city and if a d2c brand wants to launch uh, or sell its products in lucknow then again that tg is the best fitting tg so essentially the aim was to not depend on google ads facebook ads to build this community rather build this community from ground level up so event as a hack works really really well for us so we have organized events we have partnered with local event organizers you know done multiple things around events uh, around 1 lakh plus people have attended the events so this is this is this some of the screenshots of what we have done so far we've done beer fest we have done flea festivals we've done music shows comedy shows lucky ali has opened a couple of markets for us lucky ali also invested in the company later on because he so potential that we can do this keep on doing this in multiple cities now what happens is that because of this event as a hack people who have who want to come to the event they have to download our app they have to become a subscriber of noxens content then the events for them is free so if the subscription is of one month they get one if there is another event in that, in that month they will get a free entry to that if the subscription is of one year they get free entry to all the next events which happen in the next one year so they stick with us as i said this these are the people who are going out and they have money so now if a new business opens up that new business wants to target these users so we get ad revenue media revenue by the same set of users so we are monetizing it as we go along uh some app numbers so we do content we produce content we also syndicate content we get close to 14 million content impressions per month the social media handles are separate for each city so you can find nox in lucknow nox in ahmedabad nox in indor and so on and so forth the in the total reach we get is around 9.5 million 9 million plus per month we have enabled then what we did was the next step was to i shall show you the product first so on the left you can see the content so we have some original content we have some user reported content we have some creator driven content a normal user can subscribe to this content stream it's like a channel when you subscribe to a sony channel on your tv similarly you can subscribe to it by paying a monthly fee or a yearly fee with the content subscription you get free access to events that is one number two we have aggregated all local businesses on the app so if you if you have a car wash center if you're an astrologer you have you have any business under the sun you can be on our app with just one condition that you will not sell on mrp to our subscribers you will give them a privilege you will give them a discount now factor this that these users are there because they want to go out in the city they want to know what's new in the city the businesses are there because they want to cater to the same cater to the same community of users so there is a match between the users and the businesses so the subscribers will go to these businesses they will try out their offerings and that is how we enable transactions so noxens as a platform delivers content distributes content produces events to to build that community and keep that community engaged and then on the app the same users can go to different local businesses and try out their stuff at discounted or attractive pricing this is the entire product line which is currently active okay so in this way we want to be in 10 plus cities in the next 18 months we are in 5 right now and the long term goal is to be in 50 plus cities pan india most of the cities will be state capitals of the next best city in the state the first 10 cities we are not targeting any metro apart from mumbai no other metro we are targeting we are in mumbai already so that's the plan if we have at least 1 lakh subscribers per city that number will be more than the times of india circulation number so in city of lucknow times of india goes to 60000 houses and makes a lot of money on ads similarly if we have 1 lakh user subscribers paid users in lucknow then we should be matching that that ad revenue which times of india does again full margin but here the local businesses who are who advertise with us they also get a chance to 
generate roi on the on on their advertisements unlike a newspaper ad or a radio ad where the local business will have no visibility of what happened who came who did not came to the to the store here we can give them uh, a possible chance of generating roi making money of the ad which also serves as a right yardstick to measure the potency of our of our advertisement so revenue model is twofold b2b b2c b2b is brand revenue b2c is subscription revenue as i just told you the third revenue model which is in app payments this we want to enable once we are in 10 plus cities that is the stage when we want to introduce d2c brands on our app as well that you can now buy coffee so let's say uh, now we have data of people in lucknow who have gone to let's say the best 10 coffee shops in the last one year now, if a sleepy owl or if a new coffee brand, DTC brand wants to, you know, launch their Lucknow market, we can give them the right access that these are the coffee lovers. They go to this cafe, that cafe every day. And, you know, if you want, we can introduce a brand to them directly. So this ad, which they will do with us will, you know, reflect in, in their PNL, they will get some ROI out of it. Number two, if they want to also get into association with local cafes and restaurants, we can enable that as well because all of them are our brand partners. So this is the, the final vision of enabling D2C and tech concepts via our app to our young and dynamic users living in tier two, tier three India. Till the time we get there, we are monetizing them via advertisement, media revenue, and via subscriptions. So... Yeah, competitive landscape. If you see in India, if I launch a new city, we are thinking of launching Surat. So the direct competition in for our for our, for our first set of revenues is with the local traditional media, radio and newspaper. Now, as we all would agree that young users are not really consuming content there, so it's not that difficult a challenge to combat at least, and we we will get some share out of it as, whenever you launch. We have done that in five cities already. A good global reference is a company called Timeout. So they are in all state uh, country capitals, primarily in Europe. So they do similar activities. They, they do city content, they do city events. What they do not do is that they do not have a transaction layer. They don't have subscriptions. They don't enable transactions in at those partner brands, which we are doing, which gives us a even wider you know, scope of building a really large business in this space. So you can see the transaction business as Zomato for X. So matter for all businesses at the local level, but we don't have to depend on a third party marketing agency to attract users. We, we have that, you know, as a, as a media tech entity, we have that component inbuilt into our business model. Uh, some other local Indian startups are there who might have the same keyword as content. So like uh, Rohan syndicate in invested in Mugafi or local or LBB, you know, even daily hunt and in shorts but they are not doing anything similar to us. In fact, Daily Hunt is a content aggregator and around 30% of our content goes on Daily Hunt. You can read Noxins on Daily Hunt. So we put our 30% uh, content on Daily Hunt as well, on Google News as well, just to attract more users to, to, our, you know, to our system. So nothing which is absolutely similar to us, but yeah, bits and pieces, something will be common with this company, something with that company, but not the entire arc. Yeah, so our go-to market is, which I've already explained, we start with content production and content distribution. We have content partnerships with Daily Hunt and Google News. That gives us free reach, so free content readers or watchers in the beginning without any expenditure. So the funnel at the top of the company is really big. As I said, 14 million plus people consume our content every month. That is thanks to our social media strategy and Google News and Daily Hunt partnerships and Twitter and Apple News as well. So we get a lot of content uh, users there. Then the second funnel is when somebody comes to our, let's say, Instagram handle, which is Noxens Lucknow Instagram handle. There we have 90,000 users engaged with us on a regular basis. Then the third layer is when they come to our app. And the fourth layer is when they become a paid subscriber of our app. This is the the funnel, this gives us almost a negative CAC business model because as soon as the user comes to our Instagram channel or our app, we monetize it via advertisements. Even before that, I mean, if I'm doing a story on, let's say, your newly opened car dealership and that story is being read on 
daily hunt even then i'm getting paid for that story so so we are monetizing it the only way a place where we spend money is when we produce events because that serves as a brand marketing for us at the local at the city level and it it creates in, in enough buzz amongst the youth that something big is happening noxens has opened their operations here and this is their event lineup let's you know download their app let's follow them on instagram let's stay connected because they will give us a lot of entertainment so that serves as a tool hack for us to attract users to attract paid users and also to attract local brands and make them you know believe that hey we exist and we are here and we can do this for you so that's uh, the gtm so we start with content then we onboard local businesses then we introduce our subscription via our uh, with with an event launch and then we connect the the both the sides of the coin together uh so we have enabled around 60000 transactions so far in our journey which amounts to close to 12 crore rupees in gmv on an average our user transacts worth rupees 5000 in the open market and we have seen 50% renewal and upgrade rates in our subscription packs so subscription packs are of three kind gold platinum select gold is a quarterly thing platinum and select are both yearly but select is the premium 5000 rupees plan and platinum is the 1000 rupees plan so we have seen 50% renewal or upgrade rate so far most of the users are in the gold category this is primarily because we don't have a calendar of events coming up so if i give them a calendar that there are five events in the next one year they will definitely move to platinum or select but since we don't have that at this stage so users go for gold and they renew gold but at some stage you want to introduce that calendar so that we have a yearly subscriber locked in with us that gives us the freedom to onboard more brands and to charge a higher uh, advertising uh, amount to our advertisers because now we have paid users for one year they're waiting to see what you are offering and they will also try out your offerings if they if you give them an attractive privilege so that's the that's how we want to take this business ahead uh currently we are raising 3 crore rupees so we have raised funds in the past we have done three rounds so one was a pre seed round and two two rounds post that and all angel networks the the big ones in the country have invested most of them have i mean have invested twice already some of them have invested thrice as well so from wfc the founder neeraj tyagi is an investor he he has the right to be on the board as well from let's venture mohit satyanan led the deal so he is the founder of a company called tfm foods it's a listed company uh, they sell a product called cracks cracks chips if you are aware of it so they sell that from mumbai angels network the founder of mumbai angels nandini is an investor and you know so quite quite uh, known investors are already there they've invested more than once raising 3 crore ccd terms floor of 60 cap of 100 this is what our last round term were also so we have not increased the floor in the cap since the last round which was done 6 months back for the bridge we have gone with the same valuation so that all existing investors and new investors are comfortable on that number uh, but the the timeline of conversion will start from now so the 12 months will start from now so maybe the last one will convert at a 20% disc sorry at a 25% discount and this one might convert at a 20% discount there will be a slight variance in the ultimate conversion valuation but we have not increased anything we have not changed anything and we are in talks for a 50 crore 6 million round post this so by, till the time that round happens we want to do a bridge uh, we did 71 lakh rupees in september and we want to touch 5 crore rupees after 5 5 crore a month revenue number after we have raised 50 crores so uh yeah and currently since december we are in talks with uh, a leading media tech entity in india and they wanted to do an mna with us so that discussion is also on on the side if the terms suit the larger investor group and the founders and even i mean the acquirer so we can take that ahead till that time we want to close in 3 crores and go to the market and raise the 50 crore if if you know if the demand takes time so both of these things are running parallelly and this is the team so i'm vibhor co-founder and ceo i've 
uh, I'm an engineer. Then I studied advertising at Whistling Goods, worked in the advertising industry for about eight years. I have studied at I'm Bangalore. I did an executive program in media management. Uh, my younger brother, Varul, he's the COO and he's I'm Lucknow. He's ex-Hindustan Times. He understands the news world and the operations of content world very, very well. Then we have four other people on the board. As I said, Mohit Satyanan, founder of Cracks. Mohit also runs a company called uh, Teamwork Arts. And they are the ones behind the Jaipur Literature Festival. So he understands events as a hack. He understands content. Uh, Neeraj Tyagi has the right to be on the board. He is the founder of WFC. And he officially is not, but he comes to our strategic meetings and all. Nilansha Devedi, our first angel investor, she gave us the pre-seed check. She's, she's ex-Apple. And Amitesh Pandey, invested by Mumbai Angels. She has invested twice in the company. So, yeah, other, other investors on the cap table, some of the prominent ones are these. Nitesh Mittersen, founder of Nazara Technologies. Venus Dhuria, founder of Veda.vc. Lucky Ali, Avanish Sabarwal at Accenture Ventures, Simarpal Singh. Around 40 investors have invested in the company and around 25 of them have invested more than once. So, yeah, Rohan, I think we can take questions. That's all I have. Cool. Uh, thanks a lot. Um, we were like truly impressive pitch. And uh, yeah, like just to reiterate, uh, we are getting a chance to invest on the similar terms as their last round, at least the same floor and cap valuation. And while obviously like company growing big is a very big possibility, but like you mentioned, they also have a potential acquisition offer as well from one of the biggest media houses. So uh yeah, like it could be a comparatively much earlier exit than we typically see, right? Four or five years. Here, uh, it is possible that we have an exit within before a couple of years as well. So yeah, with that, we are now open for questions. Uh, we'll start taking some from the chat. And anyone wants to speak, do raise your hand. We'll allow you to speak as well. So sure. uh, yeah, Adarsh had started with, can you give details of your last fundraise? What was the reason for going for the bridge? So last fundraise happened six months back in which all of these angel networks invested at the same terms. We raised around four crore rupees at that stage. And uh, after that, in October, this m &A discussion started. By December, we signed uh, an NDA with them. The plan was to go and raise uh, six million as our next round. That plan sort of got a bit pushed ahead because of the m &A discussions. So we were not sure that how soon will that close. Finally, in January, we came to know that this m &A will take at least six to nine months and we have enough time to uh, to raise the next round. Also, uh, as a part of the term, as a part of the initial understanding, as they say, they gave us a number that they will give us two to three X of the last round valuation. So I asked them that okay, if we do another round by then, will that number uh, be, the num be the baseline number? So they said, yes, if you do another round, we'll give you two to three X of that round, whatever is the last round. So then uh, we went back to the board and the, the existing investors. We told them that this is what is happening. Both the founders told them. So they said, we want to increase our stake in the business and we should open another round at the same terms for the existing investors at least so that we can increase our stake. And you know, if, if an M&A happens, see, because M&A is a tricky thing. I can't sell the company unless all the investors agree, right? Not sell, but I can't merge with them unless all of them agree because my, I mean, uh, it's not my call alone. So right now I had to agree to all of those investors that, okay, you want to increase your stake. That's okay. Because only then they will allow me to go for the merger when I want to go for that. The merger is beneficial in my head at this stage, at, as far as the early terms, terms go, that they will fund us for the next three years. So my real vision of 50 plus cities will be realized. And I will not have to worry about fundraise because it's a big uh, company, which is, it's $5 billion valued company, which is interested in, in, in the merger. So my vision gets realized, but I'm also keen on making all the investors get a good exit. So this is, this is, this is why we thought, okay, let's open it for existing investors. And then WFC, all investors. And then I spoke to Rohan. That's why we're doing this bridge. 
another thing that there is a need of the bridge at this stage because i don't see the 6 million round happening very very quickly so i need some money to you know increase the runway till the time that the bigger round happens so all factors considered we decided to open a, a bridge round makes yeah, sense no. uh, hope that answers your question adarsh so uh, sp is asking are you making net profit if not what is the cash burn so we are making profits in lucknow in kanpur and in indore we are burning money in mumbai and in ahmedabad so three cities are profitable the net cash burn at the corporate level is close to 20 lakh rupees a month that's a corporate cash burn that includes the tech that includes the the i mean the, the entire company's money but the good part here is that the company's salary bill is just 15 lakh rupees so that's not the the reason for the cash burn the reason for the cash burn is our expenditure in mumbai and ahmedabad right 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 now we are doing a flea fest in ahmedabad starting 1st of march so there will be some burn there also a lot of money goes into working capital so if i'm doing an event let's say two months from now i have to pay some advances but that gets billed in this month so net 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 agar aap dekhoge to it will be around 10 to 15 lakh rupees burn you ordered uh, uh next is by mustafa who is asking what is the mrr and arr uh, currently so we are looking to close this year at close to five and a half, five, five and a half crore. And the monthly average is close to 40 lakh rupees. But September was the best month for us. That was at 71 lakh rupees. See, we can keep, keep up with those September numbers. If we are, if we roll out events, couple of events every month. So if we do two events, one in each city every month, we will get to that 70, 70, 75 lakh rupees revenue a month, but we are not doing that because of cash crunch and also because of the MA discussions and multiple things which were happening at the same time. Got it. Yeah. Sure. Uh, Adarsh is next asking, what's your M1 and M6 retention rate and Mao and Dow? So, uh, Adarsh, I would like to explain this in detail. Just to answer your question point blank, M1 and X, M6 will be around 45%. Now, uh, the problem in the business is that we have a highly engaged community on our content, but not on our app. Okay. So the app gets around 10,000 uh, monthly active users and three to 4,000 daily active users. These are the ones who open the app when they want to do a transaction in the neighborhood and save some money. In order to consume the content, people are consuming content still on the third-party platforms that include social media handles. That's why social media handles are very, very engaged, highly engaged handles of us. Going ahead, after this bridge, we want to introduce some app-only content because right now, the, the same content is available everywhere. So why will somebody open the app? They can just scroll it on Instagram or on Google News or on Daily Hunt, wherever. Now, after this bridge, we want to introduce app-only stories, app-only content, which will pull people in to the app. That's another reason why we want to do this bridge. So as uh, to make it simple, people are using the app right now to uh, buy subscriptions and save money via transactions or to buy event tickets as of now. To consume content, they are using, they are reading our content on third party platforms. See, there are, and I would like to build on that. There are, it's a good thing and a bad thing for us. The good thing is that if, if a local advertiser advertises with us, the advertiser wants our story to go on multiple platforms. Like, for example, if, if your story covers Rohan Bajaj's syndicate, Rohan will want that your story should put it on Facebook, on Instagram, on Twitter, on, on every platform. And most of us will read it on LinkedIn. We are not going to download the Your Story app to read it. So we are making money because of this, because the content is read or across multiple platforms and it gets a good reach at the local level. But the platform business, which is slightly newer because we introduced the app later in our, in our journey, that is not getting benefited out of it. Now, in order to uh, change this habit, we have to introduce app-only content. For example, in Mumbai, we've just started a Mumbai Market Masters series in which we are talking to it's a podcast with different local uh, business uh, owners, which is app only. The full video is only on the app. The trailer goes on Instagram. So when we can strike a balance of trailer going on Instagram and the full video on the app, more people will jump to the app. Right now, that is not the, that was not the case up till now. Yeah, Ron, we can take the next one. 
Yeah. Uh, Pankaj is saying, what's the valuation at which you are raising this round? I think we've covered that. Uh, yeah, yeah. Floor. So basically, multiple of EBITDA and revenue is what he's asking. What multiple? Uh, so if you take take a five crore rupees number, uh, uh, the financial year number, then it's a twelve x. But this five crore is full margin business. So we have to be very careful when we talk about revenue and multiple because if if a fintech startup says that my revenue is ten crores and their take home is two percent, but you will multiply from ten crores. So we have five crores full take home. So it's a twelve x on that. But in platform businesses, in content businesses, the reach and and uh, the brand interaction and the user interaction is also a factor for the uh, for the multiple. And as the MNA company also said, they will give us two to three x of whatever our last valuation is, not more than that. You got it. So yeah. next, Paris is asking a couple of questions. What forced you for a bridge round within six months? I think he's covered that already. That you know the last round's valuation is going to be you know multifold two point five to three x huh, multifold. Um, yeah. yeah. And uh, what are your spending plans for the funding? This follow up question. So uh, most of the money will go into uh, increasing our presence in the cities and creating content which can pull people in onto the app directly. We basically bypass our Instagram channels and bypass the third party application. That is the primary thing at this stage. In order to do that 50 crore rup uh, rupee fundraise, we as the founding team want to touch one crore rupees revenue in a month, at least once. And then we want to go out in the market and ask for a 56 million series A round. So that one crore rupee number in revenue is the target. And we want to achieve that as soon as possible in the next couple of months. And I think that will be that will happen because of this bridge. Cool. Uh, next, we have a question by Pankaj. What is the current EBITDA and next year's forecast for revenue and EBITDA? So current EBITDA, as I said, is negative. We're burning uh, 10 to 15 lakh rupees per month. Uh, next year, with the fundraise or without the fundraise, that is the primary question. But I think if the 50 crore rupees fundraise happens, we will touch 5 crore rupees revenue in a month. And we will be burning close to 30 to 40 lakh rupees per month in order to get to 5 crore rupees revenue. So that is that is the plan of the next fundraise. That is the financial plan which you're presenting to the incoming investor, the incoming VCs. So yeah, it's it's a great question because if the m &A happens, then things become very different. If the next fundraise happens, then things become different. If nothing happens, then we are profitable in three cities. We should be profitable in the fourth one very, very soon. So the business is such, I need around 10 lakh rupees expenditure per city per month. Okay, without events, just the, the operations uh, and the uh, the content business. And we can break even this 10 lakh rupees in a month in nine to 12 months of our launch. So after 12 months of a new city launch, we have been always profitable at that city level. But since we always add two, three more cities whenever we get to a profitability in one city, so the corporate level burn keeps to continue. And then we have to you know update our tech you know, have a better tech team, have a better tech product. So money goes into that. So as, as I said, Lucknow expenditure around six, seven lakhs revenue close to 15, 20 lakhs per month. Kanpur expenditure, one lakh rupees only because the Lucknow team takes care of Kanpur as well. It's, it's quite close to each other. But the revenue we get is around five to 10 lakh rupees. It varies because the ad revenue varies. Same goes for Indoor as well. But money is being burnt in on technology in Ahmedabad and in Mumbai. So there's a question on shareholding pattern. Uh, the yeah. founders have 70%. 30% is out with the, with the investors. Cool. Uh, next is by Jaydeet. Uh, who are some of the top businesses advertising video and what is their ROI and the retention rate for the businesses? So as I said, most of the business comes from hyper-local brands, smaller brands at the city level. Uh, you will find a lot of franchisees uh, who advertise with us and dealerships of uh, you know, cars like Hyundai is a regular advertiser. There's a uh, company called PR who are the franchisee for Royal Enfield. They work with us. At the corporate level, we have done a couple of deals with Unicorn before Apple. I mean, that was the Apple reseller. Then uh, Phoenix Malls is a heavy advertiser with us. So we worked, them, worked with them in Ahmedabad, in Mumbai, even in Lucknow and in Indore, in four cities. And total business generated in the last six months 
or so from Phoenix malls would be close to 70, 80 lakh rupees in the last six months. So that's a corporate which, which works with us on a regular basis. Otherwise, it's all local brands, small cafes, small, small businesses at the city level. And that was the core plan of the company as well. Cool. So next question is related to the city level by Mragang. How do you onboard local merchants? And what kind hmm. of incentives do you give to them? So local merchants are onboarded in two ways. Number one, by showing them our community strength. And then they agree to advertise with us. That's done similarly like a radio station works with them. So a radio station sales team reaches out to a sari shop during the during the wedding season and so on and so forth. And then they advertise with them. Because these are smaller cities, so the first level of contact has to be human. So we need to have a, a, around three to four salespeople per city uh, in tier two, tier three India. So that is one way in which we charge them for a content piece. So let's say we do a story on them, a written story. We are charging anywhere, anywhere close to 15,000 to 25,000 rupees, depending on our strength of community in, in that city. If we do a video story, slightly higher. If you do an interview with them, a video interview with them, even, even higher. So that's all advertising sales driven onboarding. Number two is when they just want to give an incentive to our local subscribers. They say, okay, I don't want an ad, but just list them on the list me on the app and I will give your subscribers flat 90% off, something like that. So in that case, we just ex extract a good deal from them. We just want them to give a good discount. So they can choose to give it to only 10 people, but we want them to give a good valuable thing. Instead of a 10% off to everybody, just give 50% off to 25 people. That's what that's how we deal with them. So the incentive for them in that case is that they will get footfalls in their in their stores. So we are working on creating hyper local sales, as, as I said in the beginning, when people go to their stores, go to their shops and buy something. So that's the incentive they are getting they, they're getting a customer by just giving a, a discount. So these are two ways. And we are not charging any commission on a transaction enabled. So that's another thing. So if 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 my subscriber goes to your shop and buys, you know, anything, I'm not charging a commission on that. Yeah. Got it. Sounds pretty interesting. Cool. Uh, next question is by Devanshi. She's asking, is having events a short-term solution to spread awareness of the app or is it something that is going to stay in perpetuity? See, Devanshi, this is a question which even we are grappling with very, very honestly. It's a very good hack. So, for example, a, a, a Dream 11 or a PTM sponsors IPL, right? Because they, they want the entire country to know about them. We want a city to know about us. So, the, what's the best way to do it? If I sponsor a third-party event, then that sponsorship amount will go down the drain. There will be no ROI on that. If I produce my own event, then what can I do You know, better? Number one, I can wire it via my app only. You have to come to through the app. You get a free subscription. You stay with the app for the next one year. Number two, uh, we can monetize the users coming in. Once, then again via ads, then again via transactions. And if, and if we introduce D2C brands, then again, the same users will be monetized there. So it's a very good hack. What we want to do is that we want to also have another hack, which is purely tech driven. Okay, I'm being very honest with you. So th then we will have two hacks. One will be a physical growth hack, which is in the city. And number two, which is tech driven ha hack, which is only on the app. So now for that, we are trying to gamify our content, introduce certain, some games and some that you play this game, you win this, you know, immediate that winning will be from again from a local brand partner. So that that will give footfall to the local local brands. So we are trying to introduce that as soon as possible. I can't answer this question whether this will stay in perpetuity or not because I don't know. If if we get a better hack, then why why will we take the pain of organizing an event? But if we don't, then we will have to continue with it. Makes sense. Uh, so next question is by Mrigamk again. Uh, do you have tech team in-house yes. or uh, yes, yes. can you give details on tech spends and plans? So we have a tech team of around uh, eight people in-house. And uh, so the salary of all of those eight people is close to six to seven lakh rupees. So they all work remotely from different parts of India. Then 
like all companies, like all startups, we outsource a certain modules if we want to do something, you know, very, very quickly. So we can outsource a certain module to uh, an agency. Ki itna karke de do, and then my tech team will supervise that. So certain we have worked with agencies only thrice in our journey so far. Some modules have been outsourced. So that expenditure comes over and above the tech salaries. And I'm not billing okay. myself in the tech team. I'm, I look at the product, but I'm not billing myself in that six to seven lakh rupees. Yeah. Cool. Uh, Anand is asking, what's the upside for investors once you merge and what's the timeline? So Anand, uh, we have signed an NDA with them. They have given me an outline of the merger. And they told me that if you agree to this, then sign the NDA. So the outline is, that they will value as us at two to three X of the next rounds well of the last rounds valuation. So now what happens is that you guys invest in this bridge round. Let's say this bridge round converts at 70 crore rupees. The next one, which we do, let's say that is at 150 crore rupees. So the valuation of the merger would be 150 into two or three, 300 to 450 crores. You came in at 70 crores. So you are getting a five X on that. So that's the benefit of investing in the bridge round. Okay. Timeline, which was given to me was six to nine months, starting December 19th. I've spoken to a lot of founders, uh, the founder of uh, SimSim, Kunal, many, many others who have sold their companies. So they have told me it takes a year or more than that. SimSim took three years to finally get acquired by Google. So these things take time. But it's kind of a, it's like a marriage discussion. So the discussions will keep on going. And if we keep on doing well, then they will be compelled to close it sooner because otherwise they will have to pay a higher price. So that is, it's it's all a tug of force, so to say. If we do well, we keep, keep on raising. They will think, ye manga hota ja let's acquire it as soon as possible. So this will keep on happening. So let's say, but six to nine months is what we have, they've told me and two to three X of the last round. But you are investing in a bridge there will be another round after this and that next round will be the last round for, for them so you can expect a four to five x exit so that's that's the way and that's why existing investors are reinvesting yeah and potentially like with a max maybe two to two and a half year timeline compared to the typical double them that huh. Jaldi to hoga. see we are in in fifth year of our existence it's not a new company that that's also need to be said because we as the founding team, even all the other investors and the strategic team, we have been working pre-COVID. The COVID was a bit of a hiatus for us, but it's a it's a mature company, so to say, as far as our operations go. Yeah. Got it. Sure. Uh, so next question is by Kiran. So we have still a few questions. We'll do quick 30 second uh -huh. to one minute answers. So Kiran's uh -huh. question is, what is your net profit margin out of the average customer revenue of 5,000? So it's a full margin business. If someone add me, then full money is mine. If somebody subscribes to my channel, again, the full money is mine. Only the GST has to be paid. So both the revenue channels are full margin. That's why I said our 5 crore revenue is full margin 5 crore, which is way more than a company which is saying 50 crores when getting 10% on that uh, as their uh, take home. So, yeah. Cool. Uh, thanks. So next question is by SP again. How much cash does the company have currently? Close to 50 lakhs is with us. But out of this three, two crores is subscribed by the existing investors. So that money will be coming in any time now. Three okay. crores bridge, three crores bridge, two is subscribed by existing investors. Uh, Avinash's question is, what is the expected DAO and MAO if there is going to be only platform content? It should be very big. I don't know. Oh, yeah. Who knows? Who knows? We, we are trying to max it as much as possible. It won't be only platform content because as I said, the local brands, they want the content to go on Instagram. So it won't be only brand, but we will have to only platform, but we have to introduce something which is only platform. Not everything only platform, but something only platform. What happens is when my content goes on Daily Hunt or it goes on Instagram, it pulls in a lot of users for us. It acts as a free marketing tool. Why to spoil that? But longer content, the gamification of content will be platform only. So you can read it on Instagram, but if you come on the app and read it there, then you can win something out of it. So that will be platform only. So you're expecting, so if our total Instagram reach right now is 10 lakhs, 
So we, sorry, one crore, 10 million. So we are expecting to get at least 10 lakh users on the app after gamifying it and launching app only. So that's the plan. So we have created their community at various levels. It's just a matter of converting that, which is a tough thing to do. I'm not undermining that. Converting that to the app. Got it. So yeah, uh, folks also wanted to call out. I've shared the investment intent link. If you want to see more details about terms, etc., which are typically the same as what we do for other startups. But if you want to still dig deeper, I've shared the link. You can also see more details there and also enter your investment intent there. So calling out uh, 10 lakh is a direct cap table, uh, pretty low amount, which, uh, you know, like will give you a chance to be on the cap table and 2 lakh is via the syndicate, the minimum commitment. Cool. Uh, Rohan, yeah. Rohan, we can take this one question on what's the plan B if merger doesn't happen. Yeah, like yeah we, are taking, have... we are covering all the remaining questions. Achha, we are covering all. Achha, take it. Yeah, take yeah. it. Sure, sure, Unless sure. you are on short. No, no, no. I, no, no I'm not I sure just told people since they are here that, you know, this is the link if by meanwhile they want to check while we cover the other questions. So, uh, we covered Avinash. So, SP is how much dilution will happen due to the bridge round? So, on 60 crores, if 3 crore is invested, that's 1.5%, right? No, 5%. No, 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 no. I don't know. I've, we have to do the math, but it won't be much. 5%. 5%. 5%. So how much, okay, this is covered. Mrigang has another question. How do you evaluate the right number and category of ads shown to users to maintain the hook and not lead to uninstallation or unfollow and huh. any plans to personalize the content? Yes, personalization has to happen and AI engine will have to be deployed. Recommendation engine. So we can build that uh, in-house, but there are a lot of plug-and-play models available in the market and we can use it. Number two, the entire business of content, which we do, is devised in a way that that a paid content doesn't look like an ad. So, for example, if I tell you that in your, if you are my on my channel because you want to know what's happening in your city, so if I tell you that, that there's a new coffee shop which has opened up on 4th Road in Car West in Mumbai, is that an ad to your mind? You will treat it, it it's, not, it's not an intrusive content piece. You will treat it as a piece of information. And that's why local brands advertise. And that's why users, you know, champion it. So it doesn't look like an ad. It, it comes across as an information piece. There is no overlaying ad or asa kuch ad nahi hai, jo, if you think of that kind of an ad. It's more of a content piece which is made as in as a as a piece of information about your neighborhood in which a brand is reaching out to you see that is why it is needed in the age of instagram otherwise anybody can say ki khud se apna ek creative dal ke boost kar dunga instagram pe and i reach out to the users but that it doesn't work like that for the for a user it comes across as an ad but when we tell you for like when when your story will cover our fundraise you will not think that it's an ad but maybe i can pay them it's, it's the same thing. It's the entirely same thing. Yeah, we can take the next one. Mustafa's question. Yeah, Mustafa is asking, uh, would you like to go back to your business model? You showed an app, but now you mentioned it's not the app where most of the action happens. Also, there are only 10K downloads of your app per Play Store. So how do you find and connect with your subscribers? What is the cost of customer acquisition? CAC, basically. So uh, app downloads are 70,000, 75,000. For one lakh tak 10k dikhaega. and uh, 40,000 odd people have paid us at least once. So the download to paid user ratio is really good. That's another reason why that company is interested in acquiring us. Uh, number two, as I said in the beginning, we want to create their community from ground level up. That's why event as a hack. Okay. Then Instagram helps us in reaching out to more readers of our content, not users, readers of the content. So th as I said, there are three channels. Maybe Mustafa missed in the beginning. Should I repeat it? So number one is the channel where around 30% of the content goes on Google News, Apple News, Daily Hunt. Then the second funnel is the Instagram funnel where we have around uh, 10 lakh users. I mean, 10 lakh reach on different city handles. Then the app. And then the paid users on the app, that's the fourth layer. So we are doing things at the local level in, in which we're picking, picking up the right TG right from the city. 
then we are also re-engaging with them on Instagram and third-party platforms. App currently is being used only to avail privileges at our partner brands. They are not using the app to consume content because content is the same on Instagram as it is on the app. So they can read it on the Instagram and they can be happy with it. Right now, we are going to introduce app-only content, which will not be on Instagram or just a trailer will be on Instagram so that people will come to the app and consume it on the app. Another thing which we are trying is gamifying our content. So you can read it on Instagram, but you can't play the game around it. The game will be only on the app. So yet we are taking these two measures for to increase the app numbers. Got it. So next... when we see uh, one more thing, Rowan, one important point. Yeah, yeah, sure, when sure. we launch the app, even our existing investors were skeptical that someone subscription pay karega ki nahi karega. Everybody was skeptical. Even I was skeptical. I said, okay, let's try it out. So the uh, the plan was to launch the app and show the world that, okay, we can sell subscriptions. So now we have sold 40,000 plus subscriptions at 70,000 download, which is more than 50% of the users who are on the app have paid us. Now it's the time to expand that base. So that's what we're doing. Got it. So the next question starts with what we've just answered. What is the total number of downloads? I think it's between 70, 75,000. Mm. Reviews last show, last review in 2022. Downloads have not crossed 100k. So, once it crosses 100k, is when the next zero gets added. So, it's between that uh, currently. And yeah, review, not sure if uh, we have an answer. Review, nahi kia, toh, I don't know why people have not reviewed. I can't manufacture that. Yeah. 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 Typically, people generally write reviews when they are very disappointed with a product and you know, people mm -hmm. who are happy are using the product, they don't end up writing reviews. Cool. Uh, we break even in 9 to 12 months per city. That's the first plan of launching a city, is to break even as soon as possible. Then uh, the profitability increases during festival season because more ads happen. And in non-season, we, if we are at break even, we are happy with that. But after we achieve break even, we want to penetrate that city deep, deeper, right? We want to tap more users, uh, the less uh, tech-savvy users as well. So then again, that layer of acquisition starts to happen. That's when events again help us. So it's an ongoing process. We can't really claim that we have captured the entire city. As I said, in Lucknow, Times of India sells 60K copies a day. And... I mean, you can imagine, even they have not reached out to the entire city. So it will take time to reach out to the entire city. Most of our content is in English. That's another factor. Right. Uh, SP's next question is, since content is the entry point to get users on board, what is or are the channels to create this? Are these exclusive content on company handles or not really? Yeah, yeah, it is. It is exclusive. See, I'll show you that slide again. So on the left, you can see the content streams. First of all, understand that we want to create a channel. That means that it cannot be a place where anybody is posting anything. It can't be a random posting website. It can't be a Twitter or, or an Instagram. So whatever goes on the channel is moderated by the in-house team. Okay. Now there are three streams. Number one is original, which we do. Number two is user reported. So any user can report anything. They can't publish it. They can only report it to us. And then we will take a call whether we want to publish it or not. And number three is creator driven in which we have handpicked localites from different walks of life. So let's say you are into gardening and you want to do content on gardening in Ahmedabad. So then you can check out different nurseries. You can tell what you get where and that content can be on the app as well. So there is a beat which we have assigned to you. This, this, that's, but everything is exclusive here. Nothing goes on any, any other platform. So, yeah. Sure. Uh, next question is by Suresh. Uh, I'm curious about profitability of M&A completion. In case it is otherwise, what is your plan for growing the company? Basically, next steps. Even our uh -huh. have a similar question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, the thing is that whether the M&A happens or not, we should benefit out of the NDA which we have signed. We should benefit out of the, the interest and the validation which we have gotten from such a big player. That is the bottom line of it. So how will the company benefit is by raising another round of funds. That's why I'm saying I'm looking to raise 50 crore rupees 
as soon as I touch one crore rupees a month mark in revenue, which I will touch in the next two to three months, and then I'll raise the next round. Raising the next round will again push that MA interested party that they if they want to acquire, they should acquire quickly. Otherwise, it, we will become more expensive for them. And it will also help in growing the company any which way. So we uh, once we close the 50 crore fundraise, we can expand to 10 cities. That's the plan. One second. Yeah. So that's the plan. And our revenue will touch 5 crore rupees a month. That's a big revenue number considering that it's a full margin business. So we are not depending on on uh, sorry on the MNA as such, and the MNA will only happen if they make all our investors happy, and if they assure the founders in written that they will fund us for the next three years, and they will fulfill a requirement of funds, and they will allow us to function the way we want to function. Otherwise, even we can back out. Nobody is forcing us to sell it. So, I'm just putting this out that there is a potential MNA. Considering everything falls into place. Yeah, that's that's my answer to it. Sure, sure. Next question is by Prakash. Could you compare peer competition analysis? I think you have a slide, right? <laughs> so this is what is happening in the content space in India. As I said, if I open a new city, if I open Surat, if I open Ghaziabad, the first revenue fight will be with traditional media, radio and newspapers. So our local advertiser, which adv in fact, the way we find out that which is a potential client for us is when we hear an ad on radio. This jeweler is advertising on radio. So if we go to this jeweler, they, he might be interested in advertising with us. So the first fight is traditional media. Uske ilawa, in India, most of the companies are in the UGC space in which anybody, so they've created a platform on which anybody can post anything like Instagram has done. That's the same thing which local has done, L-O-K-A-L. We are not doing that. We are building a channel in which we take ownership of the content. So not a direct competition. Daily Hunt and InShorts, first of all, they are national news aggregators. They're not even news aggregators. They're national. They tell you what, I mean, on Daily Hunt, you can read us. You can also read uh, NDTV or you can also read the Times of India there. Right? So we go direct competition. Nahi hai. When it comes to privileges and deal-driven subscription plans, Zomato and Dine Out exist in the food industry, but that's it. So our sales pitch is that, let's say when my, my salesman goes to a furniture shop. So we tell them, okay, you know what Zomato has done for a cafe. So they will say, yes, I know. But is there a company which can do a similar thing for you? They will say no. So we are that company. So that's how we pitch. So now another factor is here is that Zomato and Swiggy and Dine Out, they charge a lot of commission from food places. Since we are not charging any commission on, on sales generated, a lot of small uh, restaurant owners, they prefer that a user comes via Noxens as compared to coming via Dine Out or Zomato. There are two problems there. Number one, commission dena padta hai. Number two, the money flows through the Zomato books and it reaches the restaurant after, I think, a week. Right? In our case, they just get the privilege and the user pays directly to the restaurant. It could be in cash also. So, so the restaurant, you know, benefits out of that. So that's how we are positioning ourselves differently in the food industry by not charging commission, by not taking the money into our books. And But the food industry example serves very well for all other industries at the city level. Got it. So we kind of also covered one other question by Mustafa who asked about is local your competitor. So at what level it is and how it's different. I think we both covered that. Mm. So uh, three, four more questions we still have. SP is saying the four level funnels that you mentioned, what will be the percentage at each level or say if 100 people start at the topmost and mm -hmm. widest funnel, what is the count at each funnel level there on? See, Voto, it's, a, it's not skewed, skewed in our favor to be very honest. So as I said, four million content impressions across all platforms and each Instagram handle the best handle is Lucknow which is at 90,000 followers but it gets close to 10 lakh a reach so people don't follow maybe they share and their friends and family see it so 90,000 at Lucknow 55,000 in Ahmedabad so each Instagram handle gets smaller but my point here is that even if we convert 50% of Instagram followers on our app as paid users, that's a big number. So 40, 
90,000 in Lucknow in Instagram. So 45,000 paid users in Lucknow is somewhat better than Hindustan Times, close to Times of India, and it will fall way below number when it comes to Tainik Jagran, because that is, that is Hindi. So, but then our sales team can go to a, a, a new age brand and say that we can give you the best reach for your TG. So it, it's an ongoing processor. It will take time, but th that is what it is. These funnels help us to work in a zero CAC model. That's the only benefit out of it as of now. Cool. Yeah. Uh, next question is by Agash. Why not monetize your audience to post shots from the shop when they are using the discount? This gives network effect. Give them some cash back. But then the app will become a place of random things. It will become a Twitter. Huh? That's the problem. Then people will post anything. It will not become a curated channel. We can have a section on the app, which could be a thread kind of a place where they can do that. We can think of on those lines. But we don't want to make create a, a random space for posting anything because then it will fall. Then nobody will subscribe to it. You only subscribe when you see a curated feed coming in. Right? You don't subscribe to YouTube, you subscribe to Netflix. That's the difference, primary difference. Got it. Uh, Nitin is asking if MNM does not happen, then when, when is the likely exist, exit investors can get? Uh, so the likely exit, as I understand, maybe Rohan can help you better. Uh, VCs buy out angels when right. the founder's equity goes below 50% in the business. That is when founders don't want to dilute more and VCs want to take more. So they say, okay, I will buy out. Kar leta so we are at 70%. I think in the next two rounds, we will be below 50. So that, that too will happen in the next three years, Max. Agar hua, like all in all other companies, if it happens, in our case, it will happen in the next two to three years. Noted. Uh, I think the final question is by Binin. Any plans to curate political content or maybe cultural selling? Cultural selling we do. See, on political content, we have, a, we have a, an understanding. Uh, so, uh, as I said, my co-founder works used to work with Hindustan Times in the past, and he was uh, working on the city page. So, I we discussed that the least traffic, uh, the the least advertisers come on the city page of a of a newspaper, which is the page two, page three. Now, in our understanding, nobody advertises there because the news there is of nobody's interest. Ninety percent of the news is around politics. A chota mota politician has done something which nobody wants to know about. Somebody did a rally, somebody did a dharna, somebody said, okay, I'll do this, I'll do that, I'll, sh I'll clean the gutter. And nobody's interested in that. That's why nobody advertises there. So all of us who are interested in politics are interested at the national level politics or at best at the state level politics. But the city level politics, nobody is keen about. Nobody will even know ki kaun aapke city ka MLC hai. People will not know that. In fact, we did a small survey back in 2019, I guess, in which we asked youngsters in Indore and in Lucknow, that which is a city page. And they said, Ki, Lucknow Times, Bombay, I mean, Indore Times, which is the tabloid section. They think that that is a city page. Oh, city page to hai oh, the tabloid. So people don't read it. Because of politics at local level is a deterrent. For similar reasons, you will not watch a local TV channel like ETV and all. Local politics so, interest nahi aata. so it becomes a deterrent to our business. I, I don't think you should do that. Got it. Uh, thanks, Vibhor, for patiently answering all the questions. Uh, yeah. Uh, so if anyone has any final questions, uh, guys, raise your hand. We'll allow you to unmute and also ask your queries. So yeah, final call for any questions, if any are remaining. And I've shared the link uh, one, uh, once again uh, in the chat to, you know, see more details and enter your investment intent for Noxons. We'll also be sharing the recording of this call and the link over our uh, different communities as well. Cool. Uh, thanks, Vibor. I think we had a lot of questions and a lot of potential sure. interest because of the queries. So, yeah, uh, thanks a lot uh, for pitching to us on a Sunday and thank you everyone for taking the time out on a Sunday afternoon to watch this interesting pitch and hopefully... Uh, you know, you kind of found it interesting uh, because it's relatively earlier exit that we are looking at. And yeah, uh, have a good rest of the Sunday, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, thanks so much. Thanks so much. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Rohan. Bye-bye. See you. Okay. Bye -bye.